All right. Hey, everybody. I'm just going to quickly go through how we do rotations using our stereo nets. And so these rotations that we're going to do, we're going to be rotating planes using bedding. So also using a plane. So we're going to take um, whatever our units are doing, right? And whatever faults in this particular case, we're going to rotate faults around bedding. And so what we're going to do is try to get everybody back into um, their orientation that they were in at the time when bedding was horizontal. The reason that we do this is if we think that the structures that we're measuring with a unit, again, whether they're joints or fractures or faults, if we think that they formed when bedding was horizontal, if we want to understand what orientation they were in when they first formed, we have to rotate everything back using bedding. So I'm going to show you how to do this using a stereo net by hand. And then we're going to use uh, Dr. Almendinger's StereoNet software to do them quickly uh, that way. So let me just share our screen, screen here. Oh, move me over here. All right. And so we're going to use our StereoNet again to rotate our planes. And so the first thing that we need to know is we need to know the orientation of bedding that we're going to be using to do these rotations. And so I've got an average bedding from our ID4 road cut that we're going to be using. And so that measurement is um, 01879. So that is what we're going to be using to rotate everybody. And then what I'm going to do is just two different examples of planes that are going to kind of show us the easy, um, obvious way to do a rotation. And then there's also one that's a little bit more difficult when we have to go across and off the outside of our stereo net. And so the two different measurements that we're going to be uh, plotting in order to rotate them are uh, our first set of faults. So we have got a 0, 1456. And this is going to be our fault one. So again, this is an average for a fault set that we have. This is going to be our bedding. And then our second one that we're going to rotate is 214.86. And so this is going to be our fault set two that we're going to be rotating. And so the way that we do these rotations, um, what we're going to want to do is we're going to plot poles to planes. I'm first gonna plot my two uh, planar surfaces that I want to rotate. So let's start with my 0, 014. And we're gonna rotate this up to north, right? To plot the great circle, I would count in 56, right? From my east edge to plot my pole, I'm gonna count from the middle. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and six. So that is my first pole that I have now plotted. My second pole is 214. And I'm just gonna rotate this up to north so we don't get confused. We'll do it the exact same way. So right here's my 214, that's at north now. And so again, I'm plotting um, 86 degrees in. So if I was doing the great circle rate, I would come in 86. Instead, I go from the middle, right? And I'm counting out this way, 86. And there is my second pole. So those are my two different poles, right? So these are representing bedding planes. And so the way to think about these, right, is if I've got my bed, again, it's gonna be on the opposite side, right? And my pole is coming out perpendicular to that. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be rotating these using our bedding measurement that we have here. And so I'm now going to plot a pole to my bedding that I want to rotate everybody around. So that's going to be 0, 18, 79. So here's 18. I'm going to bring this up to the top. And I only need to plot the pole here, but I'm gonna plot our great circle as well, just so that it's clear kind of what we're doing. We'll be able to monitor this by kind of uh, visualizing the bed and what we're doing to it and looking at our pole and how we're moving that. 
And so this is 0, 18, 79. So 79 is here. This is where I draw my great circle. So there's the great circle for, again, 0, 18, 79. To plot my pole, again, I'm going to be opposite of this line. And so this is going to be out here at 79. And I'm going to use a different symbol since these are the two that I need to rotate. And we're going to rotate it about the x, which is my 79. So there is my three different points. So these are the two that we're trying to rotate. And this is what we're rotating it about. And so the way that we're going to do this rotation, again, what we can envision right, is we've got my bed that's steeply dipping like this, right? It's coming through the center part of my um, circle, right? And dipping down steeply into the middle. My pole to that plane, right, again, is coming over here into where that pole is located. So what I need to do is I need to rotate this plane to horizontal. And as I rotate my plane to horizontal, right, my great circle will be moving to the outside edge here, which means that my pole is going to be moving to the center. Because that's, again, if my plane is at the outside edge, my pole is in the middle. And that's how we're going to rotate this. And so I'm going to just show you how we do this rotation. So in order to do the rotation, I want my steering net oriented so that my great circle right, is going through north that my pole is on that east-west line. And so now what I'm going to show you is how we're going to do this in another color. So in order to bring this to horizontal, I need to bring this x 79 degrees, right, to get it to the middle. And so now I'm just going to do the same thing with my other poles. Um, I'm going to move them 79 degrees the same as how I moved uh, my plane or my uh, the rotation of the bedding that I'm moving these around. So this point here, again, I'm going to move it 79 degrees across here, right? So this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And it's almost 80 degrees, right, if I'm at 79. So my new spot is going to be right here, and I'll do this as a star. So I don't lose it. And so this is going to be my new orientation of my bed. And now I need to rotate this pole right here. And this pole is a little bit trickier because it's so close to my outside edge. And so what's going to happen, right, is I take my bedding plane. This is sitting in here oriented like this, right, very steeply with my pole over here. And what's going to happen as I rotate this, I'm going to pop over to the other side, right? And I'm switching from this southeastern hemisphere, which is where my pole is located here. Again, as I start generating this rotation, boop, it's gonna pop up into this hemisphere. So we're doing the same thing, but I have to cross my center line. And so as I am counting, going on my small circles in this way, as soon as I hit my outside edge, I need to go the same distance away from my equator line, and then I'm going to count in from there. So see how I'm 10, basically um, 15 degrees right south. I'm going to go 15 degrees north, and that's where I'm going to be counting in from. So this was 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 89 or 79, sorry, is what we're looking for, right? It's just a little bit back from that 80 degree mark. And so my new point is right about here. So these are my two poles. And now all I have to do is pull out what those planes, what their orientation is. So my first pole, and I can put him on the east-west line, right? This is 10, 20, five over from here. So I'm going to go to 10, 20, five over from here. And I'm going to bring this great circle
There we go. Okay, it's on the opposite side from there. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my other pull. So that is, looks like 21 degrees right from my middle point. So it's going to be 21 degrees from this outside edge here. And I'm going to again bring this down. And bring this up. All right, so this one was 21 degrees, right? It was my dip. The other one was 25 degrees. And so now I want to find the strike for both of these. So for my first one, and I'm dipping off this way, so my strike is going to be down on this end. So I've got 206.25. This is my unrotated orientation of that plane. And then this one is going to be 0.65 and 21. It's going to be my unrotated version um, of this plane. And so again, that's just how we do a simple uh, rotation, two different styles. And the big thing is to remember, again, if you're going over this edge, you just want to envision right what's happening to your plane. So this is where my pole is located. Right, as I rotate that, I'm going to pop over to the opposite side. And so I need to go to the other side of my equator when I am counting in that 79 degrees if I cross over my edge. And so we're going to just really quickly show how we do this um, in our StereoNet program. So again, this is Dr. Allmendinger's program. And so we're going to share second screen here. All right, and so again in here we can see I've already put four different measurements in, um, but I've got the two that we did, so 014.56 and 214.86, so those are in. I just have two other ones that are uh, similar because this was a data set where we did these things together, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop up here to calculations. So I go calculations and then I go rotate data. That's going to bring up this little box here and my azimuth orientation that I'm rotating in for this particular data set, right? It was 18 because that was my bedding orientation. My plunge is going to be zero because I am rotating about bedding and my strike right is always a horizontal line. So my plunge for this particular rotation is going to be zero. My magnitude of rotation is going to be uh, negative 79 degrees because my dip was 79, but I want to bring this back up to the surface. So I'm not going to go more rotating that direction. I'm going to go negative. So it's negative 79. And then um, I'm going to want to make all vectors in the lower hemisphere because I'm trying to explain the orientation of a plane. And so this would be different if I was plotting a trend and plunge of alineation. But for this particular data set, we are going to want to do these as vectors in the lower hemisphere. So we hit OK. And now I can click on this and I can see these rotated bedding orientations. So I've gotten 206.23.3, which is pretty close to the 206.25 that I got. And then I got 65.5 and, and 21.9, which is very close to the 65 and 21 that I was able to plot. And so it's really important that, again, you are understanding what you're doing when you're doing these rotations, because that is going to allow you to check your data um, and understand if you are doing these things correctly. So from there, let me know if you have any questions, but hopefully this was helpful.